Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sean Purgaul. I'm an osteopath and today I want to speak to you about osteopathy scope of practice in Canada. There are two types of osteopathic profession in Canada. One is American style osteopathy or osteopathic medicine that is regulated in Canada and their scope of practice is exactly similar to a medical doctor in all Canadian provinces. Then the other type of osteopathy is called uh, European uh, style osteopathy or manual osteopathy or osteopathic manual practice that is an unregulated health profession in Canada. As such, it doesn't have a defined scope of practice in Canada. But the health, the regulated health professions act has a number of controlled authorized acts that manual osteopaths or osteopathic manual practitioners or osteopathic manual therapists as are, they are known in Canada are not able to do. So basically manual osteopaths can do anything as long as it is within the law. That includes the using hands to provide treatments of musculoskeletal system and any type of injuries that the patients might have uh, from uh, low back pain, neck pain and so on. They can do many different techniques like cranial osteopathy, visceral manipulation, <clears throat> osteoarticular, uh, osteoarticular techniques, strain contrast strain technique uh, and so many others. Uh, uh, but there are a number of things that they cannot do. Uh, by the way, I have to mention that uh, health is a provincial matter in, a, in Canada. So. Uh, uh, each province might have its own laws and regulations so wherever you practice you have to make sure you follow the laws and regulations of the province you practice. English speaking Canadian provinces follow the British common law and they have the system that you can do anything you wish as long as it is not against the law and Quebec the French speaking Canadian province is under uh, Napoleonic law that uh, is more restricted and more uh, than you need uh, licenses for many other things to do. But you can, as a manual osteopath, practice in all Canadian provinces. Uh, manual osteopaths, again, as I said, they can provide treatments from neuromusculoskeletal and joint conditions, uh, but there are a number of things they cannot do. All across Canada, number one, they cannot offer medical diagnosis. There are two types of diagnosis. Medical diagnosis as is found in Merck's Manual of Medicine, for example, something like arthritis, uh, degenerative disc disease, diabetes, uh, cardiovascular disorder. Those are all uh, things that fall under uh, medical diagnosis. Then you have osteopathic diagnosis. These are things that deal with mobility of the joints such as for example a hypermobility in L5 to the left or a muscle spasm in the QL in the lumbar and so on. Those are osteopathic diagnoses and manual osteopaths are able to provide uh, osteopathic diagnosis in Canada uh, but they are not uh, permitted to offer medical, uh, medical diagnosis. Number two they cannot provide manipulation of the joints. Manipulation is a type of a manual therapy techniques that uh, they provide a high velocity, low amplitude thrust, quick thrust in a short amplitude to the joints to take the joint behind its normal physiological range of motion. Those techniques like, such as spinal manipulations, the one that uh, usually is associated with the crack, those are not permitted. Only uh, medical doctors, physiotherapists, naturopaths and uh, chiropractors in Canada are permitted to provide this kind of uh, manual therapy. Uh, the, they also call HVLA technique, grade, grade 5 mobilization and manipulation. But manual osteopaths use uh, many other techniques, usually gentle, rhythmic, without pressure, something like osteoarticular mobilization uh, and so on. The, that uh, is not is not uh, dangerous like manipulation. So, not offering uh, medical diagnosis 
and not uh, being permitted to do spinal manipulation is actually a good thing for manual osteopaths in Canada because uh, it brings their uh, malpractice insurance very low there is not any for example in 10 years that we've been teaching osteopathy there have not been even one case of uh, uh, injury by a uh, on a patient by one of our alumni because what we do is gentle pain free and it is not dangerous like uh, manipulation. Manipulation in Canada has killed people, paralyzed people and caused a lot of neurological disorders for uh, patients. So it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a dangerous technique and that is why it's a restricted act. If it wasn't dangerous, it would not become a restricted act. Every time I talk about this, I get uh, a lot of uh, emails from my students who are chiropractors, physiotherapists, naturopaths, and they say, oh, manipulation is good, and so on, so on. I never said it's not good. It has a lot of benefit in uh, treating acute pain, uh, but it is dangerous. You have to accept that. Uh, keeping your eyes closed and not accepting that is not a good scientific way. I'm a scientist and I always base what my belief on what the science dictates to me. And uh, you should as well because otherwise uh, having blind faith in a treatment just because it's, it's effective in some cases is not a, it doesn't make a good scientist. So that's, uh, that was no, uh, number two. Number three is uh, manual osteopaths are not eligible to take x-rays or any type of diagnostic imaging for example diagnostic uh, ultrasounds in other countries they may be able to do so but in canada and u.s they are not able to do so because it is a not it is a authorized act and they are not able to provide it so please uh, keep that in mind number four is uh, manual osteopaths are not permitted to put finger inside anus to mobilize or uh, perform manipulation on coccyx. Uh, this is a typical, uh, sometimes uh, this accident happens, patient falls down on his buttock and, and dislocates uh, or injures the coccyx and the chiropractors usually can put one finger inside anus, one outside and uh, manipulate or mobilize the coccyx but this is against the scope of practice of manual osteopaths and they are not eligible to do so in Canada. Number five, uh, they are not permitted to put fingers in any body cavities except the mouth. So no nose, ears, vagina, uh, uh, they are not able to do so. Just the mouth, manual osteopaths in Canada are permitted to provide TMJ uh, treatment, temporal uh, mandibular joints uh, disorders. They, uh, manual osteopaths can treat it and actually I always teach to my students to, provide, uh, to be specialized in uh, TMJ, be, uh, uh, TMJ disorders because they can get tons of referrals from dentists. Not so many uh, people want, uh, not so many health professionals want to treat TMJ disorder uh, which is very common and uh, by becoming a specialist in that you can uh, you can uh, you can uh, get a fully booked practice you can also charge more because it's a very niche market and it's also easier on your body for example if you have some type of disability that you can't stand for a prolonged period because uh, manual osteopath some, uh, usually stands one hour on their feet treating patients then in that case TMJ is uh, you know being specialized in TMJ conditions is something that can help you a lot uh, the the next is the obvious one uh, manual osteopaths are not permitted uh, to provide prescription and medications or drugs of any sort to patients but they are eligible to offer supplements such as vitamins minerals and other things that may help the uh, patients so they can sell it uh, and I actually actually a, a number of my students do that they they have a, I teach my students to make custom labeled products uh, that can help patients and sell it with their own clinic's name which is a good is a good way to promote their practices and is uh, financially profitable as well so that they are allowed to do so the next one is another obvious one manual osteopaths are not permitted to do any invasive measures against the body uh, that involve piercing the skin such as for example they cannot do 
uh, they cannot do surgery, they cannot take blood, they cannot do acupuncture, needle acupuncture, they can do laser acupuncture in provinces that are uh, acupuncture is not regulated. For example, acupuncture in Ontario is regulated, so either laser or, or needle ones, uh, manual osteopaths cannot do, but uh, uh, in other provinces that is not regulated, they can do. Please note uh, that these uh, 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 medical acts, some manual osteopaths who are dual registrants, who, who are chiropractors, physiotherapists, medical doctors, a naturopath and so on, some of these that I mentioned, they are permitted to do that. We have a lot of chiropractors who are studied osteopathy with us and they can obviously do manipulation, they can uh, insert finger inside anus and do other, uh, you know, the thing, uh, take x-rays and diagnostic image or diagnostic ultrasound and so on. Uh, the, the next, uh, the next that, uh, uh, the next medical uh, controlled act that uh, manual osteopaths cannot do is to take care of fractured bones, to treat fractured bones, or to cast it or to brace it to do any type of treatment for fractured bone. That is not permitted neither by chiropractors or physiotherapists, anybody, only medical doctors in Canada can do so. And the last one is manual osteopaths are not permitted to do, to do uh, to fix dislocated joints. They cannot do so. They can only refer to a medical doctor or hospital to do so. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed uh, this video. Until next time, have a wonderful day and enjoy this wonderful, beautiful day. Bye for now.